What's up guys, Epoxy here, and today I will be showing you three amazing Warlock builds that I believe will help you thrive in the new Onslaught PvE game mode. Since this game mode is going to rely heavily on survivability and of course extensive ad clear, these builds are made for that playstyle. The three subclasses that I'll be touching on will be in the order of Arc, Stasis, and lastly Strand, and I'll utilize the respected exotic bows to maximize the builds. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to stick around and leave a like, and also consider subscribing if you haven't already. But now, let's hop right in. Jumping into the first build, we're going to be discussing our Arc Warlock Ionic Trace build, which is based around the Fallen Sun Star Helmet exotic, matched up with the Trinity ghoul bow exotic. This setup will allow you to have insane ad clear capabilities on top of getting you and your allies free ability energy from your ionic traces. As most of us know, Trinity Ghoul is one of, if not the best weapon when it comes to killing an immense amount of enemies very easily. The Trinity Ghoul's intrinsic trait is known as Split Electron, which really just states that we shoot three arrows instead of one with our bow. But then we have another trait known as Lightning Rod, which is really what makes the bow come to life and be very strong. Whenever we get a precision kill, our next shot will be granted chain lightning capabilities. And as you can see from the background footage, it does an insane amount of damage and destroys all enemies. But I'm not going to lie, if you don't have the catalyst, it's almost not even worth using this weapon, because with the catalyst, it makes it so that lightning rod will trigger from any final blow instead of just precision final blows. Meaning, we constantly shoot our bow at the ground to wipe out groups of enemies, continuously regaining our lightning rod trait, which will also allow us to constantly be amplified due to how many arc final blows we are getting. Then we throw on our Fallen Sunstar Helmet, which makes our Onyx Traces move faster, as well as grants us double the ability energy we are getting when picking them up. Which means for each Onyx Trace we pick up, we will be granted 25% Grenade and Melee Energy, as well as 30% Class Ability Energy. And once you see the rest of the build, you will see how often we will be creating these Traces, leading to infinite Ability Energy for us. And also on top of this, for every Onyx Trace we pick up, our allies will also receive 10% Ability Energy for each one of their abilities. Of course, as long as they're in range. That's all for the exotics, now starting with the aspects so the rest of the build makes sense. For the first one, we have Electrostatic Mind. Defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace. Collecting an ionic trace also makes you amplified. The next aspect I like to run is arc soul, just because whenever you put our rift down, we gain a little arc buddy for us and our allies, which is huge. And also, while you're amplified, your arc souls will become supercharged and gain increased fire rate. The two very great aspects to put together. And then for our abilities, I like to run pulse grenade, either that or storm nade. I just like this one. And then for our melee, I like to run chain lightning because whenever it's fully charged and we hit a target, it jolts targets, creating a chain effect, meaning we'll be jolting a bunch of targets, and every time we kill any of them, we get more ionic traces. And then I use Burst Glide, matched up with Healing Rift, it really doesn't matter for those. And then jumping into our fragments, for the first fragment, I have Spark of Shock, which is a huge one. Your arc grenades will jolt targets, so anytime we throw our pulse grenade on targets, we will also jolt all of them. And then for our second fragment, I have Spark of Discharged. Arc weapon final blows have a chance to also create an Onyx Trace, and since you're using our Trinity Ghoul, which is crazy for ad clear, we're going to have a great chance of getting a bunch of these traces. I'm not too sure how the cooldown works on this, but basically how it works is, as you get arc weapon kills, once you get to 100%, an Onyx Trace will be spawned, and how it works for the activation progress, for every red bar enemy you kill, you will get 34%, elite and players give you 67%, and mini bosses and bosses give you 100%. Depending on what the cooldown is like on this, it can be pretty insane, you can spawn a crazy amount of Bionic Traces. Definitely a must use fragment. And then for our third one, we have Spark of Instinct, which is kind of just more on the survivability side. While critically wounded, taking damage emits a burst of damaging arc energy that jolts targets as well. This fragment is really just another easy way to jolt targets, and it also has a 15 second cooldown if you were wondering. So it'll proc really often, especially while you're waiting for your grenade and your melee to recharge, this is perfect, because it'll give you a way to jolt targets while you wait for those. And then, for our last fragment, we have Spark of Resistance. While surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage, more specifically, 25% damage resistance while within 15 meters of 3 plus enemies. And I'm pretty certain this is always active and will never go away unless you're not within that many enemies, of course. And then finally, once you're out of range of those targets, it will remain active for only 2 more seconds before going away. So Spark of Resistance is a very useful fragment, especially for a game mode like Onslaught, where you're going to be fighting constant waves of enemies that are going to be pushing in your face. This having that extra damage resistance is going to help you stay 
stay alive and also proccing all the other fragments as well is going to really make this build thrive but yeah that's all for the fragments and then of course run storm trance because whenever we cast storm trance we also jolt targets meaning more ionic traces so our fallen stun star is going to be having a heyday with all these ionic traces you're just going to have infinite ability energy and i'm very excited to see this build go off and onslaught but yeah that's all for my subclass this is really what my setup looks like i just have a little fusion with chill clip on it my trinity and a rocket for all the bosses and then for my stats i'm running high resilience and discipline so i can get my grenade back quicker and then some recovery and then looking at my mods this is what i'm running nothing too crazy screenshot it or just pull up the dim link in the description uh, i really don't want to spend too much time going over this i just want to hop into the next build which is our stasis warlock turret build that allows us to slow and freeze every target in sight as well as having unlimited stasis turrets i made this as a grandmaster build not too long ago and it does insanely well so i know for a fact that it would tear up an onslaught without a doubt this build utilizes the exotic armor piece known as the osmiomancy gloves as well as the exotic bow known as the Virgulous curve with the osmiomancies we gain an additional cold snap grenade charge and it makes it so that the grenade recharges faster on direct impact and also makes the seekers travel farther and then when it comes to the exotic bow the Virgulous curve its intrinsic trait is known as hail barrage and with this trait anytime we get a final blow we will be granted stasis arrows that when fired at the hip will freeze targets on direct impact or when shot at the ground will create stasis crystals this trait can also stack up to five stasis arrows meaning we can spawn a wall of stasis crystals that when destroyed do a great amount of damage and freeze targets as well but that's all for the exotics now let's hop into the subclass so you can see why they work so well with this build jumping into our first aspect we have bleak watcher press and hold the grenade button to convert your grenade into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles at nearby targets and once they're hit enough they actually become frozen so this is huge because since our cold snap grenade gives us two charges we will be able to throw out two stasis turrets at a time meaning we will be able to completely block off lands from ads and get free and easy kills for us and our teammates so this is going to be huge in a game mode like onslaught for sure because they offer great support and then for our second aspect we have ice flare of bolts Shattering a frozen target spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. I know I probably don't really have to explain this, but this is huge because we're going to be freezing a ton of targets with our turret as well as our Virgulous Curve bow. So anytime we kill one of them, it's just going to keep passing on the freeze to other combatants nearby, making for some more free and easy kills. That's why I put these two aspects together. And then for our abilities, of course, the Cold Snap Grenade matched up with the melee of penumbral blast we don't really have a choice for this one but this also just freezes targets with our stasis staff and then burst and healing rift and moving on to our fragments the first one i like to use is whisper of fissures increase the damage size and burst of your stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target which just translates to a 12.5 percent damage increase within a 10 meter radius so a pretty good fragment especially when you take into account that every single one of our stasis crystals will be doing that so if we can put five down with our hail barrage on our Virgulous Curve Bow, we will be doing a crazy amount of damage to groups of enemies. Then for our second fragment, we have Whisper of Shards. Shattering a Stasis Crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate, and then destroying any additional Stasis Crystals would just add some more time to this benefit. And then for the specific numbers for the benefits, anytime you shatter a stasis crystal, you will be granted 500% additional base grenade regeneration for 6 seconds, up to a maximum of 11 seconds, which is insane. So like earlier when I was talking about you could put 2 turrets down, with this, if you keep breaking your stasis crystals from your bow, you can put down 3-4 to four stasis turrets at some points, which is insanely overpowered. This fragment is a must. And then for our third fragment, we have a little quality of life one, known as Whisper of Rending. Primary ammo weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. So basically, with your bow, you're just going to be able to one-shot stasis crystals instead of having to shoot it multiple times, which just makes it easier in the long run to break these crystals and do a bunch of damage. Especially when you're throwing down five different stasis crystals with Hail Barrage, you're not going to want to sit there and shoot each one twice. It's just a lot easier to shoot it once. But that's all for that fragment. And then for our fourth and final, we have the Whisper of Chains. While you are near frozen targets or friendly stasis crystal, you take reduced damage from combatants. So it's a nice little survivability fragment that I want to throw in there. And the specific numbers are 40% damage resistance while within 10 meters of a frozen enemy or friendly crystal, which is basically going to be any fight you get into. It only lingers for 0.65 seconds once you're no longer in range. But, but this is a huge buff. A 40% damage resistance is huge in PvE, especially when you're being surrounded by a bunch of combatants. And is why I chose to use this fragment. 
But yeah, that's off with the fragments, and that's off with the subclass. Of course, we have Winter's Wrath. It's the only stasis super you have, but it's insane for added clear, and it really wipes out anything in sight. Looking at my setup, I just have the Virgilus Curve matched up with a nice fusion rifle or a grenade launcher, and then a rocket launcher. Matched up with once again, good resilience, discipline, and recovery. And then here are my mods. Of course, you can just take a screenshot or use a dim blink below. That's all I have for this build. It's going to be super amazing in Onslaught, the ad clear potential, and just being able to freeze every target in sight. It's going to help your fire team out a great amount. And it's honestly a super fun build to use. I mean, it works the GM level. It's going to make Onslaught super easy. Definitely give this a go. Now looking at our third and final build, we have my infinite threadling strand warlock build. The purpose of this build is to throw out an insane amount of threadlings to clear out groups of adds, as well as doing insane amounts of damage to bosses, and also being able to easily suspend targets on top of all that. This build uses the apotheosis fail exotic helmet, matched up with the exotic bow known as the wish keeper. This exotic helmet is amazing because what it does is, whenever we cast our super, we obtain an insane amount of grenade and melee energy for a short duration. And after testing it, I'm able to throw out 5 sets of threading grenades as well as 7 to 8 arcane needles before the bonus runs out. This results in easy free boss damage and the ability to wipe out any group of enemies in sight. This is definitely my favorite exotic armor piece to use with Strand. Then we have our exotic bow, the Wish Keeper, which allows us to build up energy from final blows to obtain a Snare Weaver arrow. It creates a pattern of traps on the ground that suspend any target within the radius, as well as being able to deal bonus damage to the suspended targets. So this bow, matched up with our insane threadling abilities, make this build super fun and will destroy everything in sight in Onslaught. That's all for the exotics, now let's hop into the subclass. Starting with our aspects, the first one we have is Weaver's Call. Cast your Rift to weave three threadlings and deploy any threadlings you ever perched. Perched threadlings are just the threadlings that you throw out that don't hit anybody and they just follow you around if you didn't know. So this aspect is a great way to get some free threadlings. And then the other aspect we have is the Wanderer. Tangles you throw, attach to targets, and detonate into a suspending burst. And also, threadling final blows create a tangle, which is huge because obviously this is a threadling build, which means we're going to be getting a lot of threadling final blows, resulting in a lot of tangles, which is great, especially when it comes to champions and high health yellow bars, being able to suspend them is very huge for your team. Now moving on to our abilities, for the grenade, I'm of course running threadling grenade, matched up with arcane needle for the melee, and also burst glide and healing rift again. Now moving on to the fragments, the first one on the list is thread up evolution, threadling shovel farther, and deal additional damage. To be more specific, they travel 30% faster and deal 53% increased damage to miners and elites and a 33% increase to mini bosses and bosses. So it's definitely worth it. And then for the next fragment, we have Threat of Generation. Dealing damage generates grenade energy. It's exactly how it sounds. The more damage you do, the more grenade energy you get back. Definitely very useful. And then next, we have Threat of Mind. Defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. Here's a list of the actual percentage back you get from each suspended kill. I just chose to use this because we're going to be suspending so many things and there's really no limit to how much ability energy we get. And the more we get our class ability, the more threadlings we get to put down with our rift. So a great fragment. And then for our last fragment, we have Threat of Rebirth. Strand weapon final blows have a chance to create a threadling. And this also stacks with hatchling. So if you have a great weapon with hatchling, put this on top of it. You're going to be making a crazy amount of threadlings. It's pretty interesting how this works. Basically, your goal is to get to 100% activation to make the Threadlings proc, but depending on what type of enemies you kill, the higher level ones will generate more Threadlings. So whenever you get to 100%, that's when it procs. So with Minor Combatants, 34% activation progress per kill, and you get one Threadling. Elites, 67% per kill, and you get two Threadlings. Many bosses and bosses will instantly do it, and you'll spawn three Threadlings. So it's definitely a nice and easy way to get some extra Threadlings, like especially if you're on a killing spree, this is going to be procking a bunch. But yeah, that's all for our fragments on our build. We of course have Needle Storm, a very amazing super that spawns a bunch of threadlings, kills everything in sight. When whatever threadlings don't kill anybody, they'll just follow you around for the next opportunity. Now looking at my setup, I'm destroying the Wish Keeper with a fusion rifle and a rocket launcher. Then my stats are once again resilience, recovery, and discipline kind of mixed around. Then here's my mods once again. Feel free to take a screenshot. And yeah, that's all I have for this build. My favorite thing about this build is the infinite amount of threadlings you can throw out, the insane amount of damage the super causes, and also having the ability to constantly suspend targets is huge. And I'm very excited to dominate with it in Onslaught. But yeah, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and decided to try out one of the three builds or try out all of them. Please let me know what you think of them in the comments below. And if you have any questions, also feel free to comment and i'll answer it for sure but yeah i hope you guys have some fun in onslaught i'm excited to try it out myself and until next time peace